is a banjo I built um, because I wanted a banjo that gave me a more warm and folky sound uh, than the banjos I've got and I also wanted a banjo that was nice and light uh, and I just wanted the challenge of making a banjo now that, um, it's made from basically scrap wood this pot is made from utility pine uh, the outer decoration is cherry which came from a tree that was cut down at the school I work at uh, the back is made from um, an old elm chair seat that was at my dad's had a split in so I repaired that um, and I've shaped it as an arch rather than a bowl because I find that it seems to give a much better sound all round rather than a bowl which seems to throw all the sound back into the middle of the banjo and loses it this this seems to allow the sound out uh, from around the banjo which is why I've got no flange and I want to dispense with all the horrible heavy metal bits that make banjos so cumbersome um, so I've come up with a tensioning system that's slightly different this one works it's not great uh, as you can see the skin's a little bit buckled in places so I'm working on a new tensioning system but again it will dispense with all the heavy metal uh, a much thinner uh, tension hoop um, I used screws and chain to create this one and I've got a, a little system on the inside which I put together uh, which means that all the tensioning is done from actually in the inside the middle of the pot uh, not not the inside but inside the middle of the pot uh, but as I say I'm working on that because that's a work in progress uh, neck was oop, sorry about that that was just the peg that I was using as a capo flying off because I, I did make a capo for this but I've lost it uh, the neck was made from a piece of pine from our attic our attic was converted and I kept the pine um, a little bit of lignum vitae to finish it off cap it the fingerboard is made from a piece of oak I got from a friend's uh, rubbish tip uh, I had to split it so I put a little um, lignum vitae decoration in the middle because I needed two pieces because I never enough to make one single piece uh, the neck has its own capo rail which um, actually came about by accident because I made the original neck for this too thin and rather than starting all over again having shaped the neck I decided to put a capo rail on to create the the fifth uh, the space for the fifth and actually that works really well uh, you can cap it all the way up to the top from here from the fifth and all the necks I'm making on, the banjos I'm working on at the moment, will have the same neck design on. Uh, it also allows me to use uh, um, uh, uh, just a standard machine head rather than having to use uh, um, uh, a fifth machine head. So I haven't got to mill into the neck, uh, right into the neck. This one just goes through and then if I just take the cap off here, if we can get it off, it helps to be able to take it off. That's it. Uh, the fifth string is inserted into the neck here, uh, rather than going over on the outside. Okay, uh, headstock, I laid it with cherry and a piece of holly. Uh, it's lined with oak and it's backed with a piece of mahogany, uh, just to give it strength because the, the neck being pine is very soft and I need something to give the, the headstock strength uh, and it just is I think uh, a great sounding banjo I don't know why it's great sounding it just has this lovely resonance which uh, my um, where is it my uh, recording king which is behind me uh, which cost me a lot of money uh, just doesn't seem to have <laughs> sound of this one makes it's great for making for, for playing um, classical music on a banjo or classical sounding music on a banjo uh, and I, I just I don't know what it is it's I, I recorded it and when I've, I've recorded it, it's got an almost looty sound to it and it may well be because I've used pine rather than harder woods uh, I don't know I think time will tell
Eat it. 